And how is everybody doing today? I am doing phenomenal. Thank you very much for asking, even though you didn't ask. I'm just going to tell you. Uh, I'm doing outstanding. I hope everybody's having a great day. I had an unbelievably good workout today in the Florida heat. I feel very, very good leaning out. I bet you I've lost more weight this week than April Lauren. <laughs> uh, that's literally, like, it's just fucking whole other pathetic, sad-ass fucking statement. Um, on less activity, by the way, I work out for about 45 minutes to an hour a day, and then uh, I'm literally sitting at a desk most of the rest of the day on probably, you know, the calories she claims to be on. Anyway, uh, I don't I, I don't know why I fucking just all of a sudden brought up her patheticness at the beginning of this, but how you doing, April? Uh, um, today, we're going to talk about the little face of chronic illness in our society. I, I, I have talked about it for years, how people... Uh, Need to just wake up. Like if if you want to if you want to eat yourself to death, that's fine. You do you. Let's try to make it so you don't actually have to access the healthcare system. Maybe you should pay for that shit on your own, uh, because it's not fair that you are going to fucking eat yourself into uh, eat yourself into a state where then you burden society on and not 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 be called upon it. Um, this guy is called Safric Bro. Um, and the, here's the, I, I also, I, I, by the way, I, I'll, be, I'll be surprised if the TikTok that I'm on remains through the next, uh, remains through the next, uh, the next couple of weeks. Give me a sec. There it is. Um, I need to find the exact one. that I need to look for. Let me, let me. Okay, that one is getting there. I, my apologies, I should have been set up for this, but I'm not. I was just like I said, I just got done with my workout not too long ago. I'll say hi to everybody in the chat. How's everybody doing? Just so everybody knows, I'm not gonna be saying hi to each individual name anymore, Brian, Megan. Uh, Jane, all of you guys that, that are normally here, I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, because we are going to like everything here is uploaded onto Alan Roberts Uncensored plus original content. Uh, I have another interview today with a guy that runs kind of like a survival training school, uh, which I think is going to be pretty, pretty neat. Uh, and then I'm talking to conservative ant on Friday and tomorrow I'll be taking a break from the, uh, Alan Roberts Uncensored podcast for my other one, and Mark and I are going to have a, have a, a talk about 2 p.m. about, uh, he's going to explain to me, he's going to explain using an example about dosing of the supplement industry. I believe that the, the young man's name is Greg Dushi, uh, who's in some shit right now. It's very shocking that, the, the, that, that a guy that literally fucking uses a fake voice, fake personality, and fake gestures uh, is untrustworthy. I told you so. Like how many fuck? How many fucking things do I get to say I told you so about from the 2020s? I fucking told you so. Uh, anyway, let me let me find this real quick, guys. Um, oh wait here. One second. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Um, I don't know how to pronounce this young man's name. I do believe I, I had another video. And I, sorry, my ADHD took over. I had another video not too long ago. Uh, I believe it was yesterday uh, where I said on TikTok, and it's it's still up on the MFing COO. Boom, right here. You can follow me there on uh, on Instagram, but it's up on Twitter. It's not on Instagram. Instagram would delete it immediately too. Where I, I basically said like. You know, I've lived on this earth almost 51 years at this stage. I've never once been misgendered or, or announced my pronouns. So maybe uh, instead of getting upset at people for not using the language you try to push upon them, maybe work a little bit harder on your presentation and it won't be an issue. Um, this 
young man wants to be called a man, even though biologically he's a woman. I looking at this person, I keep calling the person a male. So this is a perfect example of, of, of my statement with that. Um, I don't have an issue with stuff like that. I just, because you do you, boo. Uh, my thing is like, don't get upset with me if I mess it up. Maybe if I mess it up, maybe it's because your presentation. Uh, is, uh, is he a man though? Not biologically, absolutely not. I mean, he's a trans man and I have no problem calling somebody a trans man, but he's not a man. Here we go. Basically, this person is going to talk about, and we're going to talk about a bunch of other stuff today when it comes to type 2 diabetes and stuff like that, because this is actually something that Mark and I are researching heavily, and Mark, myself, my wife, uh, the Ambrosia team are, 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 are trying to come up with solutions, not just with no morbidity, which should be back in, uh, back in stock here within the next, uh, hopefully, two weeks, uh, two to three weeks. But uh, for those of you that are definitely going to be asking, hundreds and hundreds of people, uh, uh, are you are using no more? We're, we're getting incredible, incredible, incredible feedback. So, uh, but about two two to three weeks, hopefully, we'll, we'll be back in stock, and then uh, that will hopefully last through a week or two instead of a day or hours is what it was. And then the next one, we should we have some big things going. We should have be good for. Uh, you should be able to get it a lot of other places too. So coming up anyway. But diabetes is brutal. Uh, uh, first, we're going to go over. You know what? No, first I'll, I, I would like to go over like some, some data for everybody. Uh, in 2017 to 2020 numbers, there was about 34 to 38 million type 2 diabetics. Type 2 diabetes is 90, 95% from estimated avoidable and reversible by lifestyle mitigation. Type 2 diabetes is a lifestyle-driven illness. Your lifestyle drives type two diabetes, with with very with very rare exceptions, and it's not even an arguable answer. It's not even an arguable thing. Uh, now, there's a thing called pre-diabetes, which pre-diabetes means that your blood sugar levels are consistently high enough that you uh, will likely, within the next three to five years, develop full blown diabetes. And in 2020 it was estimated that one in three individuals and the actual percentage, uh, approximately one in three, the actual percentage was 38% of all adults in the United States were pre-diabetic. And 80% of them had never even heard the word, like they hadn't been tested for it or anything like that, which I do wonder why the healthcare industry would not mention to them, run a blood test that they might be pre-diabetic. And then it occurs to me, oh yeah, they want you sick. Um, and they want you consuming sugar and they want you consuming all sorts of shit and not exercising and being lazy fat fucks. But uh, because then they make money. Like you guys get that, right? Like the sicker you are, then that they can treat you without curing you. They get you on the comeback. Like metformin is the well is a well of uh, uh, a well of money for the pharmaceutical industry that only runs dry when the person actually dies. They don't try to get you off of off of it. Same thing with insulin. You know, you need to get yourself off it because it's a lifestyle driven illness. Um, but I just want to point out that 38 percent was the 2020 estimated number of pre diabetics, which means uh, it worked out to uh, somewhere around 90, 90 some million people like that were pre diabetic in America. It's fucking disgusting. It's patheticness, literally patheticness. Let's make it more pathetic. Uh, that after the great fattening of 2020, it is highly feasible and highly likely that that number is over 50%. It is highly likely that adults, uh, people over the age of 18 uh, in America, it's like, highly likely that over 50% of them are pre-diabetic, which means that within the next three or five years, we could have somewhere around 100 million new cases of diabetes. Like the explosion of chronic illness and disease that is about to happen to America will crush it by itself. Like people are worried about rights being taken away. Chronic illness and disease is going to absolutely fucking cripple people. It is going to enslave people to the pharmaceutical industry unless they do something about their lifestyle choices. And I find it incredibly uh, coincidental that all of a sudden uh, we're making it seem like trying to be healthy, being in any way fit is toxic and Somehow Tess Holiday is brave and Lizzo is amazingly beautiful and blah, 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 blah. And, you know, to question even such makes you some sort of phobic. 
Um, I'm going to be real. Like these people are eating themselves to death. The pharmaceutical industry is paying the mainstream media and social media in order to fucking propagate this shit. They're eating themselves into illness. And society is trying to deem it that it's perfectly healthy and fine. And that's tragic to me. But you're full on fucking adults. You really need to understand that you cannot just eat yourself into chronic illness and then throw your hands up like you're a fucking victim. I mean, you can. It does make you rather pathetic. I mean, grow the fuck up, America. You can't just eat straight fucking cake all goddamn day long and expect not to fucking get sick. You know, like if we have 100 million new cases of just type 2 diabetes, I'm not talking about coronary artery disease, things like that. If we just look at type 2 diabetes, 100 million new cases, fuck, 70 million new cases of type 2 diabetes will collapse, absolutely collapse the healthcare industry as we know it. They will just pharma you. I mean, you, I mean, it, it will literally just pharma you. It's fucking insanity. Like, and this is something that I don't, that I hope I don't get to say, I told you so about, but it's looking like I'm going to get to say, I fucking told you so about in a couple of years. This, it's, it's shit like this that made it so like, you know, our partners in Ambrosia and Crystal and I, like we sat down and like, listen, I, 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 I give them like, I applaud Sean and Mark and Mike Rashid and for listening when I kind of put my plea out here, like we, we need to understand that like we have a world to save. Like these people are sickly. They're addicted to foods. We need to control their hunger. Next is control, helping control insulin regulation and blood sugar, uh, blood sugar levels. And then inflammation. Like we have, plans to try to help save people because it is very, very, very clear to us that sickness is absolutely the goal of the healthcare industry and pharmaceutical industry. They want to keep you sick and spending. And they do this by partnering with the food industry, by keeping you gluttoning yourself as this person does. But this person, a fat sapphic bro, uh, is the literal face of chronic illness. Uh, this person is is does consider himself disabled. Uh, so this is not ableist, uh, but you could fucking do better, dude. So I'm, we're going to take a look and we're going to listen to this just pathetic craziness. I mean, it, it's pathetically crazy. It, it really is. It's just, I'm, I feel, I'm, I'm not even trying to be mean to this person because when I try, I can do so. But I just want to say, like, th- this is this is this th- this is the little like face of chronic illness, right? This this person would die without pharma in a week. If the pharmaceutical industry just shut down and shuttered their doors, this person would die in a week. I could I could I could walk off into the woods right now, Chris. And I could walk off into the woods right now with you know a pot to cook stuff in, a bow, and a few other things, be fucking good. I'd be fucking good for a long goddamn time. So we're going to we're gonna listen to this. So the, this says right up here, in case you can't read it. So as a diabetic, do you try to watch your sugar or do you not acknowledge it at all so you don't restrict and then binge? Listen to this answer. So again, content warning for disordered eating. This person. It's all disordered eating. This says, so as a diabetic, do you try and watch your sugar or do you not acknowledge it at all so you don't restrict and then binge? So I used to pretty heavily um, keep an eye on my sugars and um, carb intake. and Because again, you are type two diabetic. This person, I mean, a diabetic amputation is absolutely in this person's future if they don't they don't quit fucking around if they live that long, because this person literally sounds like they're breathing soup. It just it just absolutely is. You know, I, I had somebody be like, "You think you're better than these people?" I am. If you if you watch out for your health, you are absolutely better than a person that just totals their health and makes excuses for themselves. I hate the fucking. I mean, I'm sorry. I know that that upsets people too. You know, I mean. 
And by the way, just in case everybody knows, uh, the Cynical Bro is where I, I saw this actual video. Go subscribe to that dude's channel, Cynical the, the Cynical Bro. I love his channel, hilarious, deadpan, uh, where I'm very animated, the deadpan humor. I love it. I absolutely love it. But here we go. And I found that I kept still getting into really bad cycles of prolonged binging and then restricting, and it was making things worse for me in a lot of ways. I've uh, Yeah, the cynical dude, uh, AJ, the cynical dude. Sorry, the cynical bro, but the cynical dude. But so if you find yourself binging, you need to get some counseling and, and understand that that is not something like you you need to absolutely get that fixed. Like I'm a binge eater myself, diagnosed binge eater, right? As a fucking newsflash, like, as, you know, as, as just so everybody clearly understands, if you are hundreds of pounds overweight for your frame, you have not recovered from binge eating. You are just eating consistently, consistently in a binge fashion, eating enough food to maintain this girth is in fact binging daily. The consistent consumption of food in order to maintain this size is in fact binging. It is massive overconsumption. It is privileged over consumption. This person is privileged as fuck. But listen to what they say. I've been a diabetic since 2014. And so I have learned a lot about how my body reacts to certain foods. And um, so I have a good idea of what um, are safe thresholds for my body. No, you don't. If you had an idea of what safe thresholds were for your body, you would not literally look like a globe. I mean, like that, that's, it would not be, it, you, this is, this is unsafe. This is unsafe. I'm not even talking about the hormones that this uh, trans man uses to grow the beard and everything like that, which I, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the girth this person has. When you see, when you go to this person's channel and I, I, I'm telling everybody, do not go give this person hate. This person hates themselves enough. That is the face of a person that hates themselves. Beyond beyond hatred, that person is trying to erase themselves and eat themselves to death every day. Anybody, anybody that is type 2 diabetic and is not doing their very best to try to take it upon themselves to get off of that medication is in fact killing themselves. And somebody said up here, um, uh, somebody said up here, da, da, da. A wave of diabetes also means a wave of amputees. It absolutely does. The the, the wave, and I mean the absolute uh, massive wave of amputations coming is crazy. And you know what follows two to five years after, after the first diabetic amputation? Death. Almost all the time. I mean, people start getting parts of their body locked off for diabetes almost all the time, especially because... It normally is an ambulatory amputation, meaning it, it is not like a finger or something like that. It's normally something that can cause less ambulation, which this person is already disabled, I believe, and doesn't move around that much. But um, it causes less movement, less actual moving around, that sort of thing. And the person gets even less activity and enters more depression because they just had a part of themselves cut off because they fucked up their life. Because they fucked up their eating, they had something amputated. And are completely, they normally have no sexual function at all. They normally are completely impotent because of the diabetes. Um, so they literally uh, are eating themselves to death. They know it. They get more depressed and then they eat themselves even farther into, into, uh, into, into ill health. But listen to this. But I was also able to talk to my doctor about adjusting my medication so that I... I'm able to not have to restrict as much. So I have a little restrict as much. What the fuck restriction does this person think they've gone through? I, what, what restriction? This is test holiday level craziness. What restriction has this gone through? I mean, what, what th th there's no restriction. Th I mean, 
you're, you're three times the size of what you probably should weigh. There's no restriction. This is not restriction at all. At all, whatsoever, not even a little bit. I mean, not even the slightest bit. This person, this person wallows in gluttony. This person gluttons themselves on a daily basis to stay massively morbidly obese. Massively. And is talking about restriction and increasing their medicine so they can then... A little bit more support from my medication. So I'm still only on the one medication, but I upped my dose. Do you want a cookie? You're only on one medication for diabetes when you could be on none if you actually t took care of your health? By just a little bit. Um, so that that way I would not have to restrict us severely. Um, so they're upping their dose of medication so they don't have to restrict carbohydrates as severely. As a newsflash, your body does not even need carbohydrates. Your body does not even need carbohydrates at all. It doesn't. Your, your body needs protein and fat. Those are essentials. There's essential amino acids. There's essential fatty acids. Your body does not even need carbohydrates. This person should go on a massively low carbohydrate uh, intake diet. Uh, not diet, lifestyle. Their, their, their lifestyle should be changed to massively, and I mean massively low carbohydrate intake. And it should the carbohydrates that they do intake should be only from vegetables. Only, only. This person should not even probably, and I know it might feel restricted and blah, 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 but the choices are, the, literally the choices are to be on massive more medication so you can eat more carbs so you don't feel restricted when in fact you are the size of a fucking tank. Uh, or, uh, I mean, it's just, this, this, this is the face of chronic illness in America. People literally making excuses of why they should keep eating themselves into chronic illness. This person is going on more pharmaceutical medication so they can further abuse their body. If the doctor, al the doctor allowing this without a psych consult is malpractice, in my opinion. I'm just, uh, that, that, that's, that's my opinion. And now I can have a little bit more freedom with my food and I don't have to, um, I still kind of keep an eye for general counts, but I don't have to actually excessively count or count. I have more freedom with my food. You have more freedom with your food. I don't, I mean, what the, I mean, that kind of, I don't, holy shit, that's some serious freedom that you're looking for. Uh, give me one second. Freedom, food freedom. This person looks like they feel food freedom, like in, in the full donut buffet. And I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'm not trying to even be me. I'm not, I really, I, I've lost my patience for patheticness. I've absolutely lost my patience for it. It's it, it, somebody said time to bring shame back. This person is terribly ashamed of themselves. That, that, that's why they're trying to erase who they are. They are terribly, a terribly, terribly ashamed of themselves. They absolutely are. Uh, already, like, I'm sorry, nobody that loves themselves does this to themselves. Nobody that loves themselves, loves their actual life, would try to get more medication so that they can face fuck themselves with carbohydrates to get that mouth pleasure instead of actually being healthy and trying to live a long time. Like, this person has, if you would put the, hook this person up to a polygraph, they have very seriously low expectations of their life expectancy, quality of life, what they're going to do with their life. Very seriously low expectations of their life. Calculate or, or anything like that. And then I still regularly check my blood sugar as I feel I need to. So if as I feel I need to, you should be checking your blood sugar all the time. Like they should just hook you up to a consistent monitor at this stage. If I feel like, um, I have, maybe I'm having low blood sugar or high blood sugar symptoms. I will check it. If I feel like um, I ate something that might have elevated my sugar too much, um, I will check in with that just to kind of see and gauge. And same with activity because activity. The fucked up thing about this is this person is actually giving advice on TikTok to a whole bunch of people, medical advice, basically, 
about how to increase their dose of diabetes medication and why it's okay to a, a, an audience, a, an enormous audience of people, and enormous probably both, you know, size wise and size wise. Um, and somehow this stays on. Uh, somehow this stays on TikTok. Like TikTok is a weapon of destruction of, of society, if you ask me, because stuff like this gets promoted, pushed. It, I mean, ends up in people's feeds. And this person is giving medical advice of what a person should do if they want to have type 2 diabetes and then go to the doctor and, and they don't want to restrict on carbohydrates. So they just get on more medication. Th this is the patheticness of society. This is the face of chronic illness in our society, and it is pathetic. Activity level can really affect um, your blood sugar level. I will often um, make sure to check my blood sugar alongside what types of activity I am doing to get an idea of what um, certain activities do to my blood sugar. I hope that, that answers your question. I hope that helps. Feel free to let me know. So, again, I don't, I don't want anybody to go over this person's channel. Uh, this is, that's, a, uh, that's Marchionis Dar Darby. That is a very good point. Alan, this is also the face of addiction. They need a, an intervention. I completely, completely, completely agree with that. A hundred percent, because that person is addicted to food. That person is addicted to food, addicted to the attention, addicted to all that shit. It, it is very, it's pathetic, sad, and at the same time, I have a hard time giving a fuck anymore. Like, these people fucking sit on a fucking throne of, uh, they sit on a throne of lies that the fucking media, social media, and wokeness has built for them. This person, the person that, the person we just saw, Truly, like, I mean, this, they, 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 that's a reason to bring back mental institutions. This person needs inpatient care for their mental illness and physical illnesses. Uh, they truly do. Like, I mean, they, they absolutely do. It's, it's unbelievable. Uh, exactly. It, it, it's uh, costing all of us. No way the, the, this one works a proper job. No, absolutely not. This, per this person is supported by society. If anything, this person is now going on more medications so they can have more pleasure via their fucking mouth, what they put in it, make themselves even less healthy. And it all it does is create, you know, it, it takes some of the supply, which then increases, uh, which it increases pricing. Like it, like, the more that these people access the healthcare industry, the more that they're going to fucking the, fucking strain it. And everybody pays for it. Everybody fucking pays for it. Uh, da, da, da. The biggest poison in this mess is the attention they seek, as well as the empty desire to be anchored to a tribe. I do. Rick Slick, that fucking, that was prophetic. It sounded good. Um, I'll take some questions too, by the way. This reminds me of Steve Asante who uh, manipulated the healthcare system to get more drugs. Dr. Now kicked him to the curb. Uh, restricting carbs is much easier than living with, with the food restrictions he'll have when he's on dialysis. People like him, and this, I'm, I hate to even say this, but being in healthcare, I can tell you, being on dialysis, this, a person like this will just fucking smash food. Because what they think is, well, if I have to go through the pain of dialysis, once a week to have my, you know, to have my blood cleared and everything like that, I might as well eat whatever the fuck I want. That's what they do. I've seen it. So this person hates themselves. Like not Tess Holiday hates herself. Lizzo deep down hates herself. Like they know they're trying to fucking get, you know, get what they can while they can, but what, what they're doing themselves, not one morbidly obese person. I can say this because I was a morbidly obese person. Not one morbidly obese person, can think to themselves, this is not dangerous deep down. Like deep down, you know it. Like when your body hurts and you have a hard time moving, you know it. You know it. I mean, it's horrible. It's just horrible. Addictions are difficult to address. Absolutely, they are. Um, let's see. So many of them don't want to work and want everything given to them. That's very true. He's disabled, doesn't work, and benefits from the government. Then uh, he needs meds, and that also is cost. It's true. I mean, it, it is absolutely what it is. Uh, and you have to hate yourself to poison yourself on the regular. You do. 
I mean, this person, it's daily gluttony. Like, that's the thing. Like, this person's like, oh, it triggers my binge eating. What, what the fuck kind of eating do you think is going to keep you 400 fucking pounds? That is binging. Like, especially, like, this, it is absolute binging. To stay 400 pounds as an average height person, this person is actually a fucking female, biologically. 400 pounds. 400 fucking pounds. At least, by the way, just from the pictures I've seen, at least. Like, to eat like that, to eat at test holiday levels, it's abuse. Like, you are abusing your body. You hate yourself. You hate yourself. No, like people are like, oh, you're so mean to so mean to fat people. Nobody is meaner to a fat person than they are to themselves. Straight up. Me saying you are obese and unhealthy is the nicest thing I can say, especially when I couple it with try A, B, C, D, E, F, G. You try these things. We offer coaching. We offer, I mean, you can get our book. You can do all sorts of stuff. Uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to put them down in here for those of you that want with the book, by the way. You get a month of our app. Live pre-recorded hit style training classes from my coach. My wife is actually my coach. Uh, she, I mean, she helped, she didn't help to, she had put together the hunger management method that helps, that helps me even without the supplements, take care of my hunger and manage my hunger. She's helped develop uh, no morbidity, which is helping hundreds and hundreds of people on its first run, get control of their lifestyles. I mean, and she, so you get live pre-recorded classes from her. You get to be in our hunger management support group, plus the book and the hunger management support groups where I keep track of all my coaching, all my training, all my food, my activity, that sort of thing. We give daily advice. It's a very, uh, very supportive group. Or you can uh, get a consultation for either myself or Crystal. Again, she's my coach. Um, and so if you think I'm not your cup of tea because you're too worried that I'm going to scream and yell at you, you can get a consultation from her. You also get the month, the month of the app with the consultation. So you get the same thing with the book, except that instead you get a 30 minute consultation with either her, herself or me. Or if you know your lifestyle is just fucked up, you can get our coaching. There's a three month block right there where you can actually get our coaching. Uh, we communicate on a daily basis via the app in your own private chat, just me, Crystal and the client. We have weekly video conferences to make adjustments, and we focus on satiation, satisfaction, healthy activity for the person's activity level. We have people that run marathons. We have people that just stand up more often. Uh, and like I like a, this person, I would help this person out, but I would also suggest to this person they need to get some counseling about why they hate themselves so much. They hate themselves. It's so so clearly true. Uh, society is more focused on instant gratification rather than than uh, delayed. Anything gained through delaying gratification feels so much better. That's the thing, too. A lot of these people you hear say, like, I don't want to restrict. You're not restricting shit. Like, restriction is if you are eating at a level that your body literally cannot maintain a healthy weight at. That is over-restriction. If you restrict... Uh, if, you, if, you, if you want to restrict your calories to lose weight to get to a healthy weight... That's not restriction. That's health. You know, the thing is, like, it, and they don't actually couple the, you know, face fucking themselves with pie and cake and shit like that. What they do is they fucking think that it just it just happens to them when they eat this stuff. It's not it's not what they're eating. It's just like nature. It's fucking crazy. Not betraying their cause. Cult is more important. That's well, it's definitely a cult or have crystal yell at you. Crystal doesn't yell. My, 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 my wife, my, my wife is like, my wife is the human embodiment of what a, a yoga teacher uh, is. And I don't scream and yell at people on, on consults either. That was a joke. I, I really don't. I, I don't scream and yell at clients. I mean, to me, anybody that's, anybody that's willing to make a change I, it, it is a hero to me. Anybody that's willing to try to make a change is a hero to me. I will help you in any way I absolutely positively can. You are a hero. You deserve help. You deserve to be supported. We, that's, what, that's why we have the coaching. That's why we have all of this. But um, uh, in one second, there we go. But, uh, you know, the, 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 but even with clients, like, this is just, oh, by the way, this is just me being animated. Like, you guys have seen me piss pissed. So. Uh, da, da. Oh, I know you know. I know you know. So. Uh, let's see. 
Let's see. Kindness versus niceness. People, uh, nice people don't want to hurt your feelings and want to be liked. Kind people are willing to be cruel. Boom. I fucking love that. Dude, I fucking love that. That is outstanding. That is what a fucking great statement. Uh, they are so excited about getting their their uh, fast food and few. They really are. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's reached the stage where it's being pushed as like health and it's okay when it's clearly not. Like, it's like fat phobia. The word fat phobia is being used in mainstream media news right now. We don't want to be fat phobic. Yeah, we do. All of society should be. Uh, because the wave of chronic illness that's coming will crush society. Uh, my stepfather was uh, amputee diabetic and dialysis three weeks, three times a week and still ate whatever he craved. He rolled around in his wheelchair at a, with a bucket on his lap to uh, regurgitate excess fluid. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. That's, 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 that's bad. That, that should be met with counseling too. It really should. Um, congratulations on the weight loss. The, fo- the folks in the chat, I'm down, down about 110 pounds this year, still working on the last 30 pounds. Boom. Fucking hero. That is a win right there. That's a win. Damn. Tim us 78. That's a win. Big time. Uh, Mark Henry was six foot four, 398, and the guy was massively overweight. Exactly. And one of the strong and the strongest man in the world at one point in time. You know? So how bad does it have to be for us to get to make a real change? Because heart disease is the leading cause of death in the country. <laughs> Wait till you like in a couple years, that number is gonna fucking skyrocket skyrocket, especially with the other shit that's going on. Uh, with the other, uh, the other thing that's negatively affecting people's health to a great degree as proven by actual data and shit. Um, fat phobia suggests that society hates fat people. Nothing can be farther from the truth. We hate the fat, not the person are willing to say so shit at, at some point in fucking time, people need to realize that, you know, uh, society, society like should be terrified of obesity because it is going to crush society. It is, cr- it is the visual embodiment of future chronic illness. 400,000 people are, a year are estimated to die just from straight obesity. Obesity is put on the death certificate. 400,000 people a year. That is more than the fucking pandemic or about, about equivalent. When you consider Healthy people, people without uh, without comorbidity, it's vastly more, like vastly, vastly more. Crazy. Almost 70 pounds down so far this year. Boom. Boom. That is out fucking standing. Outstanding. That is outstanding. So good. So, so, so good. Uh, we hate the thing that comes with being obese and being overweight. That's the thing. The things that come with it. The, and, and I got to be real, like, wake, wake up, people. Like, you, if you're a morbidly obese person and you're not trying to do everything about it, like, you are burdening society. The, like, through what I'm talking about. To, to, like, the data is the data. The amount of type 2 diabetics that are about to happen in the next three to five years, unless we right the ship, is just fucking too... Uh, it, it, you don't get it. If people think that insulin prices are high now, wait till they know they have oh, like half of the population hooked. They will skyrocket that shit. You are you are now a slave. You are a slave to the pharmaceutical industry. Alan, hearing uh, hearing speaks reminds me that weight loss, like other addictions, require a support system. That's up with your goals and the best person in mind. The person hates themselves, but their friends hate them even more. Yep, people. Like, yep, I completely agree. Is DeSantis running in twenty four? I don't. I don't know. But if he does, I do hope that Byron uh, Byron Donalds, uh, who is my local congressman who I voted for, runs for governor to replace him because he would be an outstanding replacement. Um, I do not know. I would love to keep DeSantis here, and I would love to have a convention in the states and us reboot the United, entire United States government. But that is something that I will talk about on my podcast, Alan Roberts Uncensored. Which you are, if you are not, by the way, uh, if you have not. Um, subscribe to that. Uh, you can subscribe to it right here. I've had some interesting conversations already. Uh, let me see here. Share, copy, link the show. Uh, and we're going to be doing all sorts of uh, our, like social media for it and everything like that. But right here, boom, there is the Alan Roberts Uncensored podcast. 
Uh, we have all, all of these lives go up there and you can watch them live. You can watch the videos of them live and all of the, uh, there's all sorts of original content being filmed for it. I have, in fact, I have a video. I'm going to leave you guys about 10 minutes early. So we got about 10 more minutes because I'm going to, uh, be filming a video with a guy who talks about sustainable lifestyle, being like literally like having lifestyle skills out in the, out, you know, out in the woods or out on your own, how to get your food, everything like that. Um, and then I'm talking to a conservative aunt on Friday and I'm setting up all sorts of podcasts that are just for the podcast by itself. And it's called Alan Roberts Uncensored because we are in an uncensored fashion talking about all the things that YouTube does not want me to talk about, uh, that they will strike the channel down even farther than they strike it down now. But they're talking about it even that we talk about all the things that people feel suppressed about on other social media aspects. And we put it up on Spotify and we just go with it. So if you want to hear me talk unrestrained, because this is restrained, there are certain things that are going on about all this stuff that I cannot possibly even talk about without having this video stricken down and taken down and then the channel taken down. So please do follow the Alan Roberts Un Uncensored podcast. Um, I'm 100 percent fat phobic. I was obese last 92 pounds. Uh, lost 92 pounds in fear that that will ever happen again. Boom. Great fucking job, Chippies. Great fucking job. I went to move to Florida, but I got Youngkin here in Virginia. Youngkin looks like he's going to be good. The irony is Fat Sophic Bro tries to give advice to everyone, including bodybuilders. It's fucking hilarious. It's hilarious. I'm down 200 pounds, diet and exercise alone. I have PCOS and a few autoimmune disorders that I see people blame on why they can't lose. There is literally no excuse otherwise not wanting to. Jamie Lee, absolutely phenomenal fucking job and phenomenal example being set right by this woman right here. That is out fucking standing. Look at that shit. Boom. All the way across. Great fucking job. And I'm so fucking, you should be so proud of yourself. Society thanks you. No shit. I'm going to share my governor with the nation. They, they, uh, they need common sense. Florida uh, looks right in. I'm not. I, I, I'm upset that he's even thinking about it. I would rather have a convention in the States and us reboot the federal government. And we'll talk more about that, I'm sure, today uh, on the Alan Roberts Uncensored podcast, which will be live. If you want to watch it live, by the way, uh, it'll be live on the MFing COO over here on Twitter. Then you can follow you can follow that. And hang on, I will actually put this up. If you're not following on Twitter already, I really would appreciate you doing so. Uh, we are actually live on Twitter right now. Uh, so in case you ever can't get to... Uh, can't get to YouTube or anything like that, or they pull me off YouTube. Here's where you can find me. Boom. Uh, and please do, whoop, please do check me out there. Subscribe, follow, do all the fun stuff and everything like that. Um, there are no genetic disorders or health conditions that prevent the second law of thermodynamics. Exactly. When people are like, oh, some people just can't lose weight. It's like fucking yesterday, man. Like, I got to be real. Uh, I re I rewatched I rewatched the, the video from yesterday as I was posted up to the podcast. Man, Jeff Napard really let me down. Like, I mean, you, like talk about pandering, you know? Like, nobody is doomed to obesity. To say so is damaging to people. Uh, I mean, check out Hotep Flotep. I don't I don't know I don't know what that is. So, don't know what that is. Alan Roberts, Republic of Florida. Uh, dude, I'd love to have a convention in the states. Absolutely love to have a convention in the states. Florida is actually one of the like the state where they're telling you to get out, be healthy, eat right, lose weight. Our our Secretary of Health in Florida should be the Secretary of Health for the United States. I'll gladly do the job if he doesn't want to, but uh, he absolutely should be a hundred percent. Anyway. A glutton uh, a glutton on YouTube who got paid today, who got paid today already. Went to like three fast food places today. It's insane. These people don't see it and I don't know. Well, that's, uh, is that who that is? Hotep Flotep. You know what? Maybe this is who we'll talk about tomorrow. Maybe, maybe, maybe we'll maybe we'll check his stuff out. I don't know. We'll we'll see. Uh, I got about five more minutes, guys, and then I'm gonna like I'm gonna go. 
I have a COS here. I'm going tomorrow. Okay. Brian, I got lost in FedEx up in Hayes, test holiday BS for a while. Ended up having uh, weight loss surgery to work my way back down from 298. I'm 167 now. Brian, I'm I'm glad you're doing well and recovering from it. Very, uh, uh, very, very, very good. Signed up for my local gym last month. I'm 6'5", was 305, down to 290 after a month of counting calories and weightlifting. I watch your videos for motivation. That's fucking awesome. Fucking hero. Fucking hero. Um, let's see here. It's simple calories in, calories out, and saying it's uh, it's not not a choice is, is cap. Florida is a, is great because your summer clothes all year long, and you take pride in your appearance. Boom, boom. I agree. I completely agree. I love Florida. I absolutely love it here. Love it, love it here. So I'm going to subscribe to Hotep Clothes Up. You know, maybe we'll have him on. That would be cool. Uh, that would be very very cool. Anyway, we got people just talking in the chat right now, but I just want to tell everybody, uh, you know, I, and I, uh, I wish I, I lived where a place where it was summer all year long. It's fucking glor Florida is the fucking, the, the free state of Florida is amazing. I'm so happy my wife moved us here. Um, you're an inspiration. And one of the reasons I, I, I close to my goal physique started watching you back when you yelled at me, uh, in your car. Thanks for being real. Matthew, she is. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, April Lauren really want, uh, wasted a great opportunity. If she had someone like Ileona give me constructive criticism for free, I might uh, might add, I'd be ecstatic, but I'm not a, uh, I'm not a pod person. April just is disingenuous. I'm sorry. Like, she, like I saw this, the, the recent thing. I was even thinking about doing it, but I fucking talked about her enough. She's just, it's fucking patheticness at this stage. But she wants to lose, like get, get to a hundred pounds weight, a hundred pounds down total by the end of this month. I'm going to say she should be done by now. She's been like, she's been on this version of her weight loss story for the last two some years. Like it's, it, you know, and any weight loss is good weight loss. I'm just going to argue that if she does anywhere close to the activity that she does, she is chasing a bad diet. She is not actually trying to fucking lose weight and build a healthy lifestyle. She is just chasing a bad diet. And, likely will eventually bounce back. It's just very super, super duper unhealthy. So I, I wish her the best. I will probably still make videos about her uh, because she is a great example of what not to do. Uh, fabulous example of what not to do. Uh, uh, yeah, she is supposedly hurting for dough, but went to three fast food places and made food at home. I, oh, uh, I think you're talking about Foodie Beauty, not, not April Lauren. Anyway, uh, whoop. Wish I could transmit to, to how much uh, better actually being healthy is. I, I wish people could understand. I, I wish people could see it, like feel it. It's amazing. Uh, April could easily get to 100 pounds down by the end of the month if she did what she was portrays she does. If she did what she, she portrays she does, she would be down. Absolutely. 100%. Without a shadow of a doubt in my mind. Um, I, I, like, I probably lost more weight than her last week. Doing less activity again. And eating what she kind of claims to eat, like 1,800 to 22,000 calories. And, and, and her basal metabolic rate is probably higher than mine because she outweighs me by about 90 pounds, by about 70 pounds. So just saying. Uh, anyway. All right, guys, I am going to wrap this up because I do need to get ready for this next podcast. I hope everybody has a great fucking day. Thank you very much for tuning in. Tomorrow morning, it'll be 7 a.m., uh, and I'm going to pick something fun to talk about. So uh, I hope we really, 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 I hope everybody has a really good day. And go follow me at uh, uh, the MFing COO on Twitter. You can watch what happens, uh, the filming of the Alan Roberts Uncensored podcast live. Uh, and if you haven't already, you can check out uh, our app at any of these links. You can get uh, the book, Fuck Being Fat. Uh, solve your weight problems once to throw off the math and willpower. Oh. oh, there it is. Good. Did it ha did it work right? Yeah, it did. Okay, good. You can uh, get the book "Fuck Being Fat" uh, and get a month of the app. You can also get a consultation with Crystal myself, which also gives you a month of the app. Also, or if you just know you need help, 
You can just go straight to the coaching. We have a few slots available. I can tell you this, that probably by about August, we will, I mean, the, we're, we're going to reduce the number of slots that we accept new. So coaching is going to close, not close down, obviously, because we're going to keep our clients we have until they're done. Uh, but the number of clients we will be taking in will actually reduce down because we uh, – are getting busier and busier and busier with no morbidity. And then the next thing we got going on and a few other things too. So, and the Alan Roberts pod, Alan Roberts on Central podcast, those sorts of things. So, uh, makes, you know, if, if you, if you need help adjusting your lifestyle, get it now. God damn.